I'll speak about the unique role I have at BCG right now, being a, a chief technology officer for Gamma, which is the lighthouse, the AA, or advanced analytics practice of BCG. And um, take you through some reflections that I've had from BCG, McKinsey, and Booz Allen. So I've actually, <laughs> in my short tenure, have seen quite a number of big analytics problems across various industries and various domains that will probably touch each and every one of you in this room. Uh, and then go through a model that I'm in the process of defining, so we'll have some room for q and I'd love to hear your feedback and see what you think about it. And it goes into analytics as a whole, analytics at scale. Um, not so much the technical depth right now, I think there's technical tracks for that later, but really thinking through what's wrong today with where we are in analytics and why are we just not quite there yet, which is, in my opinion, we're not quite there yet. So we'll use an analogy, soccer. So the failed goal, which I, I again believe is analytics today, is that every single time you're the coach of a game, the kid just misses the goal and you lose. And you sit down and you wonder, what the, why is this kid missing this freaking goal all the time? Is it the kid's fault? Does he suck? Did I hire the wrong person? Is it my fault? Do I suck? I don't know. Uh, does the team just suck? I mean, I mean I'll mention, I, I'm, I have some teams, I'm a, I'm a Boston native, so I might be on the other side. But <laughs> um, or we're, they're just extenuating circumstances. It snowed, the weather sucked, whatever. And then you have the other side, which is what I think will be analytics at scale, which is the undefeated team. This is the team that for some reason you don't know why always wins. And you have the same exact questions, right? Is it that one person that's always winning for them? Uh, who's responsible or is it, is it just luck? And the question I want to think through today is, how do we get from being that organization that's always just missing the mark, not really scaling like they want to, to always being a step ahead? So a model I developed called the DIP model, which I am in the process of still developing. It's not BCG-centric, but I will give a couple of breadcrumbs of how we use this at BCG today, uh, is centered around three main tenets. The first one is design. Now, again, a lot of this might seem common sense, but I'll walk you through some of the pieces as to why I think they're a little bit nuanced. On the design side, a lot of us think visual design, but it's not just that. You have the strategic design component, the visual and the organizational design. On the strategic design piece, this is your, as, as a couple of other speakers mentioned earlier, who is my user? Do, if, if I'm an executive at the level that, I'm, that I am and I wanna make my company analytics first, do I need to change my mission? We know Facebook did this recently. Um, and you know how, how else do I need to think through the overall strategy? Again, very BCG centric, but it's important. The visual side, and then I'll mention something that BCG did here, I did it personally, I've been there for about five months, is how, not, not the UI you plaster on the analytics. I don't wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about how you're connecting the analytic component to the way people think and see your tool. So for example, click to buy out Amazon, right? It's not the fanciest thing in the world. It's not this amazing UI, but it's very simple because everything is connected seamlessly at the back end. At BCG, what did we do? Who here has watched Interstellar Passengers or knows HBO Westworld? Cool. That UI designer is BCG's UI designer. So we thought film is cool. Going super innovative and super fast is cool. Who is the best at doing that other than the film industry? So we hired Chris Kiefer and he's now building our platform's UI. And on the org side, uh, again, we think about organizational design. So a lot of clients have asked us, or myself, right? Andrea, we're building out this team, it's super cool. It's an innovative adjacency side of things, but it has to be secure and our CISO is freaking out. Our CISO doesn't know what's going on and we don't wanna be bottlenecked by them, what do we do? So we tell them, do not add levels of management, add lines of management, right? So if someone sits in your innovation lab, they should have a dotted line into the CISO or the CISO minus one or minus two. So you don't have to add a layer of management, but you do have to make them feel they're accountable and they're responsible to the main part of the org. 
And another way to do this is by simply co-locating people. Take somebody that works within the organization of the security side inside and co-locate them in the innovation lab. Make them feel like they're a part of that team. And we've done this internally at BCG as well um, on my team. On the ideation and engineering component for the, the innovation tenant, again, I'll explain what we're doing at BCG. There's the technology side of the house, right? We're using a bunch of tools. We're building a bunch of tools internally. We do it for our clients. But then there's the ideation component, which is we want to solve really, really hard problems. And a lot of people go, eh, management consulting, you're not solving hard problems. Eh, we kind of are, uh, because you have to think about you all belong to either one domain or one industry, um, or you in the general, right, if you belong to one organization. At BCG, we have to solve every domain's issue, every cross-cutting vertical, every horizontal, and we have to do it with one platform or multiple platforms, et cetera. So we have actually created a platform. The name of that platform is Source. Uh, I, cannot dis <laughs> I cannot display it uh, for obvious reasons, but I can give you one uh, analytical problem we're solving for. So you have two models. One is a typical clustering model, pretty simple, and one is a six-layer neural net. So it's getting very complex. How do you then determine how much compute power and data storage and scale is needed for each of that, for each of those models dynamically. It'd be really nice to give a data scientist a platform that says, hey data scientist, when you input your parameters, your infrastructure will automatically understand what you need, when you need, and how you need it. Now if you start thinking about every analytical model we have, every parameter, and how quickly those parameters can change, the combinations start exploding. So this is a very hard problem we're trying to solve right now. It'll be one of the core pieces of source, and it's for our data scientists internally at the moment, and then we'll start to, to release it. Um, and then, of course, we're solving all the other regular problems, right? Ingesting data, scaling uh, our platforms using big-named big uh, infrastructure uh, as code tools like HashiCorp and Terra, uh, Terraform from HashiCorp, et cetera. Um, and on the people side, here, I, want, I say talent lifecycle management because I've, uh, I've been lucky enough uh, to hire over 60 people in two years. And I've noticed a few things. Engineers don't want to work for consulting companies. <laughs> it, they are like, no, Andrea, we're your friend. That's why. But other than that, this sucks. Um, and I ask them why. What's, what's the issue? And they're like, listen, it's not that you want to hire us. It's not that your problems aren't easy to, to solve. It's that you don't know how to manage the careers of engineers. You don't know how to manage their career path. And at any company that's trying to scale analytically, not being able to manage the career path of your data scientist or your engineer, not giving them some end goal, right? What am I going to manage? Who am I going to manage, right? This isn't clear when you're not at a Google or at an Amazon or, or, um, or a Netflix. And so we've worked very, very hard at BCG to give them a career path that gets them up to VP of engineering at, at Gamma, at BCG, and that maps to our partner tracks. Um, additionally, how are we training them? How are we giving them times and incenting them to write wh white papers to be on stage? Because again, at BCG, at McKinsey, at Booz Allen, this has been very atypical to allow us to speak. So thinking through the entire life cycle of that person's talent, um, that they're, they're in the talent in their lifetime is very important. So I'll just take a, a step back. This is, this is the model where we obviously are introducing it at BCG. And it goes across, it cross cuts not just analytics. But I think this is where it really is incredibly important. Um, because it's, for some reason, everyone thinks these pro this is, makes a lot of sense when you're like, oh, I need to build a new business unit. But when we say, now you need to scale analytics, they start going, we need to build a better model. And you're like, well, hold on a second. It's a little, it's a little more than that. And uh, I hope everyone can see this. But what I wanted to do is just give some, some key factors. Obviously, you can deep dive into each of these tenants, and we can go on forever and ever on how to do each one, how to do it well, how to not do it so well. Um, but I wanted to just deep dive on some, some of the factors and then leave, leave rooms for questions. So on the design side, I think we mentioned this, put the user in the driver's seat. Um, they will be forgiving if you do. And this is your internal user and your external user as well. Uh, so you know, rather than, rather than say, let's wait to get this product exactly right, and I, I think someone mentioned that earlier, release it early. 
tell them it's early, tell them to give you feedback, and they'll be a lot more forgiving than if you just release it after seven months to a year and say, this is what we thought was good for you. Uh, visually, huh, the user should spend less time considering and more time choosing. I don't know what industry everyone's in, but it, does, it doesn't just have to be retail or buying to have this be the end goal. You just want people making decisions, just clicking buttons, not knowing why, right? <laughs> um, and in the product space, uh, again, we have Starbucks as a major client of ours, and we have a couple of other clients, which I won't name, but you know, they'll walk into this particular store and they'll walk out with about seven things they did not need. This is because the experience is so freaking seamless that they walk out like, why did I just buy those 10 things? So that's, that's what you want to aim for, whether it's buying something, selecting something, choosing something, et cetera. And then organizationally, um, highly aligned and loosely coupled. Again, this is very much like microservice architecture in, in tech, but it should be applied to our people, right? So break out the teams. Be agile, but don't only be agile. Create those lines of management. Ensure that everyone feels they have some accountability and responsibility for everything that they do. Um, and that should actually help you deliver much faster uh, in, uh, in a much faster way. And I can say that because I'm in the process of building one platform, releasing an MVP. I've been at BCG for five months. And I built McKinsey's analytics platform in under 18 months. So innovation. Start from the inside out, right? So <laughs> I, I don't know why this hasn't happened yet, but I'm just my own pain point, timesheets. Who, I mean, I, I'm sorry, I, I still have to do timesheets. Uh, I am a consultant, uh, and I get yelled at for not having my timesheets done in time every single week. Um, I get put on the naughty list in front of our managing director's nice big speech. He's like, these are the people who don't do their timesheets. Why hasn't someone innovated timesheets yet? I'm saying, can, huh? Change your billing style. Yeah, I, hey, hey, that's not my, that's not my pay grade. Uh, well, it is my pay, but you, you know, um, it will ruin my pay grade. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just think about that and think about that, like what Amazon does, right? Oh, they, we have all these problems inside, and so then we release the product once we solve it. But this is kind of what I mean by a lot of times we just think very outwardly about what everybody else needs versus what, the own com what our own company needs. It'd be really cool if I log into my laptop and some device notices, hey, Andrea just logged in and checked her email, clock starts ticking. 9, 10, 11 p.m. at night, Andrea starts buying some stuff. Uh, she's probably not doing work. And then I get a little memo at the end of the week that says, hey, Andrea, we logged all these hours. It looks like you were working. Were you or were you not? Guarantee you everybody would fill out their timesheets and the data you would get from that would be pretty awesome. But no one has done it yet. Allow time for non-business critical product creation, but have an end goal in mind. So we do this at BCG a lot. We take time that people aren't on projects and we say, here's a really hard problem to solve that a client has. Right now we're doing it in predictive maintenance. Predictive maintenance is very difficult to solve for because there isn't a lot of data. Sensors are new, sensor gathering is new, and failure is so minimal that the noise, there's just no noise in the data. So we're asking them, figure, figure it out, right? Um, and give us innovative ways to do this. And we say, I say predictive maintenance because we don't want them to just, hey, go solve a really hard problem. And then they come back and they go, you know, I found out how to make Elon Musk's rocket travel work even better. And we're like, oh, that's great. Uh, <laughs> not for us. Uh, incentivize authorship, branding, and white papers. We incentivize this a lot at BCG. We want people to white write white papers. We want them to brand. And we want them to be authors of, of cutting edge techno technological solutions. And that makes them stay. On the people side, I think, again, this is pretty straightforward but hard to do. Why, why are your employees there? Why do they want to be there? Making that part of the interview process is super important. And making it as important as the coding interview is what I've also seen has been very hard to actually implement. So a lot of times we go, yeah, we ask them why all the time, and I never get that feedback from an interview. So I go, what happens when the, what happened when the person asked why? And they're like, I don't know, but they, they wrote some awesome Python. <sighs> Can you tell your employees your contribution helped us do X and improve Y? So as an engineer, I've, I've suffered this in the past, and um, I promise my engineers they won't suffer it here at, BC, uh, you know, at BCG. They need to feel like they are in the front line. 
data scientists, engineers, they'll work harder for you. Your analytics will scale faster if they know what the hell they're doing and what, Im what impact it has at the end of the day, and they're part of that ideation session. It's not a, here's a problem we solved at the ivory tower, go fix it. Um, again, very common, uh, common sense, but we have every client we've been at, they've been like, huh, yeah, I, gu I guess I should do that. Um, and then this one comes from Netflix, I absolutely love it. We are a pro sports team and not a kids rec recreational league. And again, analytics today and analytics at scale, right? Today it's a lot of prototyping, it's a lot of piloting, it's a lot of pox here, pox there. But when we think about turning an organization inside out and saying you are now gonna be data driven, you're not gonna be gut driven, right? It's not, I have a gut, my revenue's gonna go up, I have a gut, my revenue's gonna go down. It's, I see the data every single day on a device and I know what's happening. That, that's analytics at scale, not I wanna do a POC with, uh, you know, TensorFlow, and I want you to use GPUs. Go figure it out. Um, so any, I, I have a, just a few questions for consideration. Any questions? Yeah. All right. So a few considerations I'll, I'll leave you with, which is, again, what we ask a lot of our clients to do is, how does your analytics strategy affect or complement the company's mission? I rarely see this happen, and I would be kind of refreshing if it did. Uh, cl companies, in order to really put their foot forward when it comes to analytics, need to change big things and take risks. And one of those is perhaps changing the company's mission or adding a bullet point to that mission. I mean, I think BCG should do the same now that they have a big analytics component. But it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but it, it, it's very rewarding um, if they do it right. Who are the implementers and doers in my organization, and how are they affected by a shift to a more digital way of working? So a lot of the times, again, a reflection here is that our clients always say, we don't have these people, they don't exist, we need new people, they're impossible to find, what do we do? The first thing we ask them to do is to actually find, do you actually know all these people in your organization that do the work? Because if you don't, let's start scanning them. Let's see if they have the skills. And little do you know, someone who can write in Java sitting in your back office can probably write at, in Scala, because it's based on Java. Uh, and you didn't know that. They're just sitting there writing some SQL queries. So we, you know, it's really important to understand first, OK, if I want to scale my analytics organization with the least minimal you know, work involved, Find, find what you have and build upon it, right? Start, start small, start simple. And simple is who already exists and can I upskill them? And hey, maybe then they won't quit, which is even better. Or I won't have to fire them, which is even better for consultants. <laughs> we don't have to recommend the firing. Uh, how early in your analytics journey are you thinking about the key factors in the DIP model? Um, and one of the biggest reflections of a lot of our clients are we should have thought about the design first. It's really hard to do an analytic data flow. We've seen them with all the speakers, right? Data comes in here, data comes in out. You do some, you do some stuff in the middle. There's a black box, and poof, comes out an output. Um, I think Data IQ did this extremely well, right? In allowing data scientists and executives and engineers to work together in one place. Um, how are we, you know, how are we all doing that in our in our organizations? And again, this is something BCG took very, very seriously by hiring some of the one of the best designers we could find. And then, you know, always consider that your internal and external users need to have a, fric a frictionless and enjoyable journey and build from the inside out. So that's what we're doing at BCG, right? We're building our own platform. So when a client comes in and asks us, can you build our platform? How do you know? How, how do you know you're credible? And we'll say, well, because we built our own. And by the way, it touches about 60 different industries and domains. So it, it wasn't easy. Um, and, and obviously, your internal user should be your very first beta tester. It's just a lot easier, um, and you'll get a lot more traction. Uh, and yeah, so I'll, I'll leave you guys with that. All right, everybody, thank you very much.